On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're bringing you a different type of episode. Over the last year, we've covered thousands of miles and visited dozens of homes, and these are the 10 biggest deer that we've come across over the year. This includes deer from Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, all over the place. We hope you guys enjoy this episode. We're going to have a couple more of these types of episodes, so if you enjoy it, be sure to let us know in the comments and leave us a like. That was that one from 2018, and here is the one I think everyone's been asking about or wanting to see or see a picture of. Here he is. Here's Shank. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he, we had a really good rain uh, the night that he came out. There were two does and a fawn that came out right before him to feed in the food plot. Uh, I'd say about 10 minutes later, I look up and this deer, head down, he's feeding and he's facing me and I'm, my hands are shaking. <laughs> and I was getting worried because first of all, it was getting darker and darker. And also there was, some, there was some vegetation hanging over the food plot and he was more towards that side of the food plot. And if he would have taken too many steps, his vitals would be covered. So I knew it was gonna be quick. I was hoping he would turn while he was still in the food plot and I could still get a shot. He took one step broadside and that's when I let it go. And <laughs> there he is. We brought our dog Remy in on this track. That was our very first track. So it was a great night all the way around. Papa actually got shot two weeks later. Um, he disappeared for about a month and then showed back up and stayed until pretty much until I and until I killed him the very following year. He uh I first picture I got of him that I knew I knew that it was him was in was in April. And from there it just kinda, you know, completely took over my entire life. Um he scores a hundred and eighty nine and three eighths. He uh put on about forty inches from four to five and uh I, I actually hunted this deer for 60 days straight, uh, 230 hours, and finally, finally got him. But the deer I passed to kill this deer is right over here. So we're at 2016, which would be Hollywood. Hollywood's a buck that uh, I get asked about an awful lot. Right away, you can see that he's not a normal deer. He's got 21 points. A bunch of other little points that uh, didn't quite make the cut. One broken point back here. Doing a full body mount, you don't get a lot of options as far as size on your deer like you do a shoulder mount. So you kind of got to pick out a form that fits the deer's body. He's got eight points just in his eye guards alone. So he's got four on each side. And then uh, his G4s, G3s, sorry. The G3's got, had stickers on each side, real deep fork stickers. He scored mid 80s, and I've had him scored in the lower 90s. Score doesn't really mean a whole lot to me anymore. It's fun to see where they, they end up, but other than that, it's really just a number. I shot Hollywood October 26th, so uh, I was lucky enough to catch up with him just before the rut. I knew if I didn't, you know, obviously it was going to be very difficult and it would just be a matter of luck to get in front of him. So he turned and he stepped away. He was actually going back to where he was coming from, stopped behind one of those pine trees, and uh, I knew that was the, the opportunity to take the shot. I shot through some stuff, but uh, hit him pretty decent. rest was kind of history type thing. I, I shared the recovery with four, three other guys, three or four other guys. A deer that special, you, you don't, you don't want to leave anybody out. You know, you, you want to make everybody feel a part of it. We had a good time. We went in, we, we got them after dark, and um, I kind of gave out some knives after that with their names engraved on them, and uh, it, was, it was just a good way to top off 2016. It was a really good year for a lot of guys in Pennsylvania. Hollywood was no exception. The next deer up uh, is my best deer to date. Uh, just had him officially scored. Really uh, never scored many deer. I just thought nets were for fish, so I just I never really scored them. But had a guy come down, a good friend of mine, Toby Hughes, is, uh, is a master uh, buckmaster scorer. 
and then I had another gentleman come over that's a Boone and Crockett scorer. The deer ended up scoring 190 and 1 8. It's got 29 inch main beams, 14 inch G3s, 12 inch G2s, uh, just a tremendous deer. It's got some 6 inch mass measurements. I actually saw that deer for two years and, and couldn't kill him at 26, tw 26 times I seen him, I could not ever get him killed. And uh, finally, I knew where he was bedding and where he was coming out, and I set up on him and it was 156 yards. Back then we wasn't allowed to use straight wall cartridges, so the only option I had was a muzzleloader. So every morning I'd get up at five o'clock in the morning and I would drive down to the range and shine my lights down and I'd sight my rifle in every morning before I went hunting and made sure it was still on six inches high at 100. I knew that would fall right in at about 150. And long story short, third day, daylight to dark, daylight to dark, daylight to dark. He come walking through like he did previous times that I couldn't kill him because if I went on that side of the hill, the wind blew back in the bedding area and he'd bust me. He come out ran out he actually stopped in the honeysuckle and as he turned to run he uh i thought man he's going to run clear to that thicket and i got the gun up and it was an old night rifle and i, I screwed the safety almost plumb near off that thing i thought god please don't misfire and it run through and i thought oh my gosh and i was looking through the scope my heart pounded on my chest i remember thinking i'm gonna have a heart attack before I get this deer shot and I just, I closed my eyes while he was still standing there looking at me. I remember he was looking at me and he was licking his nose and I thought, I was looking at him through the scope and I thought, dear God, before I die, just let me shoot this deer. Before I have a heart attack, I just, just let me shoot this deer. And uh, anyhow, he run through this opening and I'm bleating and, and, and bad and yelling and everything else. And he run right through it, right into another honeysuckle thicket. And I was going to be out of my life forever but he stopped and the only thing sticking out was right at the back of his rib cage clear to his face and i'd seen him 26 times with a bow in my hand that was the 27th time and i had that gun off safety and i remember looking through the scope and he was looking at me licking his lips again and i said surprise gun season boom and i shot smoke flew and and he run up through there and i thought i missed and i'm trying to dump powder in the gun and look where he's running and, and he his horns got tangled up in vines and for some reason i thought my goodness that thing's gonna it's stuck you know, not thinking, <laughs> and it, you know, he just jerked his horns out, but he reared up and he fell back on his back, and he got up and he staggered and he went down, and uh, I was trying to hoop and holler, and I just couldn't get nothing out. I was just totally out of air, but. Let's go back over here. This is this year's deer, which is whoa, my deer right here. So this is your deer of a lifetime. I mean, I, I've hunted this deer for four years. I've got pictures of him from four years of trail camera pictures. I mean, this deer is, he's 26 and three quarter inch inside spread. He's got 12 inch G2s. He unofficially scores at like 190. And he's just got junk hanging off of his everywhere. He's got stickers, he's got the acorn. He's got a hole in the horn, he's got it all. I'm so proud of this deer. This is the one that'll be on that display and I'll take fence post and no hunting signs or whatever and he'll be standing here looking to the left when you walk upstairs it'll be a cool looking display on the day he got this deer he's watched this deer for four years through trail cams the day he got this deer we're talking on the phone on the way to his stand and i'm like i got this feeling you're gonna get that deer today so just about an hour and a half later, my phone rings, it's still daylight, and I'm like, what's he doing calling me? It's still daylight, he's die hard, he stays in until it's time to get out. I couldn't understand a word he said. I didn't know if there was an emergency or what. Finally, he calmed down enough to tell me he got that deer. It's pretty amazing, pretty exciting. I honestly don't remember the hour after I knew I'd shot him. I was just so full of adrenaline. He ended up being in the Ashland front page of the paper and a couple other papers. I'm just so proud of this deer and this moment. I mean, it means so much to me to finally kill him, my deer of a lifetime, so to speak. I'll probably never do it again. And he's just an awesome deer. I've got trail camera pictures like I told you of him. Last year, he literally had a drop time. Let me find it here. He literally had a drop time last year. That's 2018. There's 2018 with him sparring with another deer on a trail camera. This is a picture of him two years ago. If you look at these two here, that's his signature right here. 
he was big then, but he wasn't near as wide as he is here. And then the next year he had the drop tying. And then I've got pictures of him before that also. Let's see what else I got in here. Here's him with another buck. At, uh, that was probably two years ago too, the same year. But I just got a lot of history with that deer. He was nocturnal. I've done everything in the world to try to narrow down his core area, figure out what he was doing, where his main bedding was, try to catch him. But he was nocturnal until the girls got him killed. He come out with one doe and there's three do other does in front of me. So that's going to be a cool full body mount. This is my wall of giants, I guess you could call it. Uh, this is probably some of the best deer that I've ever killed. So I, I put them in the living room where everybody can see them. So coming over here to my 195 and 5 8 white tail that I killed when I was an eighth grader. We'll go ahead and put, uh, put the shed right up beside it so you guys can kind of tell. It's pretty awesome that he was able to actually keep a lot of the points that he had the year before. He's, you know, he matched this one, matched this one. So he grew this, grew this, grew this, grew this, grew a split. He was 161 inch 10 point and he had 34 and some change inches and non-typical points, which put him at right at gross in 195 and 5 eighths and he netted 191 and 5 eighths. So he's about as symmetrical as they get for a deer with 22 scorable points. This is the best scoring deer I've shot. It's around 200 inches. It's got 17 scorable points. It, I sat on that deer 13 days in a row from daylight to dark hunting that deer and on the 14th day I went somewhere else and the deer walked in I was sick. So the next morning I went back and I, the next evening I went in and I shot the deer that evening. So he was showing up every five, six days and uh, I knew he was going to show himself in the daytime and I knew it was that eventually he was going to make a mistake. and. Uh, he was a real, really sharp deer. He'd been there, we'd had pictures of him for three previous years. And I would accessed a 200 acre farm to hunt that deer on. And I had uh, multiple cameras in there and he had only, only one camera that he was actually tripping and the other spot seemed to be dead. And I set up in there in a box blind. It was kind of a pitch point place in between. I had some corn scattered around in there. But the evening I shot him, a doe had came up the hill and I was watching her as she was in the corn and just just right at dusk I looked and I could see the outline of his rack and he was standing behind the tree over the bank and then he kept watching the doe and he eased up the up the hill and he stepped out there and, and I was watching him and I didn't know if I could get an arrow through there because there was like some trees sitting there uh, covering him up and I I picked a spot and I shot and the deer jumped and ran over the bank and I thought, man, I hope I hit that deer. When I walked out, I'd hit him right in the heart. Deer went about 10, 15 yards, was laying there dead. And I, when I picked him up, the pictures I had of him, I never dreamed he was more than 180 inch deer. And when I picked him up, I thought, that, that deer's 200 inches. I mean, you know, he amazed me. He carries a five and a half inch circumference measurement through the whole rack. That's the best scoring deer I've ever killed. I've shot two other deer, it's 190 inches. We'll just stick with Indiana. Here's my biggest deer ever. It is 203 inches. Now I shot it down there on him too. And actually this is a replica. You guys can't tell, but I'll give you a close up. Here's the real one. He's 203 and 6 eighths. He is impressive. The, um, and this deer the year before, believe it or not, only one had one antler on this side and this rack was about half this size. He, um, I was fortunate enough to harvest him. Uh, I knew a lot about the deer. Um, I, got, I actually got a picture I'm gonna show you real quick. And actually, here's the picture of the deer the year before. You can see the one side. So when they say management deer, don't shoot them. At least give them another year to see if he uh, recovers. <laughs> and I'm glad we gave him another year. This has been my hobby for a number of years now. This deer here, I shot back in 91. Uh, 
I found the sheds off of it, seen it the year before. I'd already shot a deer, so I couldn't hunt it that year. Found the sheds. Um, it scored uh, mid 150s. Following year, it turned into that. It's just gross is 200. Non typical netted 194 and 5 8. Typical it netted 176 and a half. Um, southeastern Ohio. It was the largest deer in the county. Killed in the county for um, about 15 years. Of course, now they kill bigger ones on a regular basis. This one I shot in 2006. It uh, grosses 205, and that's 195. Uh, got trail camera pictures of it. Seen it the last day of June. Put on a lot of inches. Uh, it was probably 140 inch frame the last day of June. And then uh, it showed up on our place in October. I ended up shooting it November 2nd, I believe. Second time I'd seen down on my stand. The next buck is by far the biggest buck in the house. Um, he's really unique in that he's 24 inches inside. His brow tines, one of his brow tines is almost 15 inches. The other one's 14 inches. His typical frame's 200 inches. I've had him on display with the biggest bucks in the world and he doesn't look out of place. I mean, you can put him with the very biggest bucks ever killed and you're like, what the hell is that thing doing? I mean, you know, he, he sort of blends in with them. Um, for this area, he really unique deer. I mean, this is a good, good hunting area as far as the Midwest and Ohio goes, but there are better areas of Ohio for really top end quality bucks. He's, he's the largest buck in the history of this county by 20 inches. Um, his, if you just took his four point typical frame, just his brow tines and his main beams and you gave him four circumference measurements, he would make Buckeye Big Buck as a four point. So kind of, kind of a unique deer. And uh, I had about two and a half years of my life into hunting him. Um, myself and my boys had a, uh, an area where we could hunt all to ourselves. We didn't own the ground, but uh, an elderly couple that, that we've been friends with for years gave us permission, exclusive permission. Then we had permission on another piece of ground where it was shared permission. Then there were other three other uh, guys that I all knew that all had reconnaissance on the deer. They all had trail cameras. And one friend of mine had actually shot him the year before, clipped hair off the top of his back. But uh, it, was, it was quite an adventure. I killed him the opening morning of the 2005 season. I did not have him pinned down that year either. It was a year sort of like this year. We had lots of mass, lots of hard mass, lots of acorns. And so the deer in this area, this is mostly wooded. The deer weren't real patternable. They were sort of spread out. But one thing we did have going on that year is we had no rain. It was real dry. We had 57 days of no rain in, in July, August, and, and part of se in, in September. And so water was important. It's the only year I can ever remember hunting where water sources in this area really meant something. And I was hunting where there was a water source below me and a big, I was on an oak flat leading to a creek that wasn't flowing, but it had puddles. And actually the hunt, a very memorable hunt. So it's opening morning of bow season, it's October 1st, and I overslept. And my wife, who's really not an avid hunter, but woke me up and said, boy, you're not going to go hunting today? All you've been doing all summer is, you know, worried about this deer. And I thought, ah, okay, I'll go. So it was broad daylight. I went, got in a tree stand and, uh. I'd been sitting there maybe half hour or so and I saw a doe and two yearlings come down a hardwood flat in front of me and they got about 50 yards out in front of me and they looked over the bank and there was a, a puddle in that creek or what, where the deer had been drinking and they walked over the bank and the mom went over the bank and the two yearlings followed him. About a half hour after that on out the flat and it's October 1st so it's still, even though it's an open hardwoods, there's a lot of foliage and it's hard to see, I can see antlers off in the distance and I saw antlers here and I saw antlers here. And my, f my first thought was, it's two bucks getting ready to square off or getting ready to spar. And all of a sudden it starts coming towards me and I realize it's one deer. <laughs> and they're walking, he's walking right at me. So he comes right down the flat, follows the exact trail that the doe and the two yearlings were on, and he stops right where they stop. And I remember thinking in my mind, oh, he's going to walk over the bank down to that puddle and walk out of my life. And he stood there for a second. He even looked over the bank down to where those deer were. And then he just wagged his tail and came right towards me. And he got about 25 yards away from me and something, I don't know if an acorn fell or something, but he was actually facing me and he heard a noise, he stopped and he turned and looked the opposite direction and just opened up that pocket 25 yards. And so anyway, I shot him and uh, I, there were no, well, there might've been glow knocks at the time, but I didn't have them, but I was shooting white crested arrows that looked kind of like a laser. And I saw the arrow disappear in his chest. So I felt really good about the shot. And 
I'd had a lot of time at two and a half years and invested in this buck to think about what I would do. So first thing I did is I got down out of the stand. I didn't go after him. I went and got our wildlife officer, our county game warden, brought him back with me, showed him there's my stand, there's my arrow. And the, and the wildlife officer actually started helping me track him. He found the deer. But he tells a funny story. He said, Mike, he said, um, when you came down my driveway that morning, he said my, his driveway was pretty long gravel driveway, maybe a third of a mile, quarter of a mile driveway. He said, you were going well over the speed limit. He said, and when you got out of your car, he said, you were clicking your heels like a leprechaun. He said, you were <laughs> jumping up and down. He said, I knew something really exciting had happened. So anyway, uh, that, was, that was quite a big deal. But uh, again, two and a half years of my life tied up into that deer. <laughs>